well hello and welcome everyone it is so good to see you all uh just just so good and i could not be more excited to be bringing alpha pro series number 159 to you live oh shoot it feels good uh we got both players in the little seconds uh massa had to hit the restroom really quickly so while massa is in oh no he's namster's ready okay while massa's in the washroom before we get started, I really quickly want to um, just help us out with a lot of these show matches and funding it. So we've got to say a quick thank you to F-Bomb. Uh, the F in F-Bomb makes portable and delicious snacks. They're like these low-carb, keto, paleo kind of things. Damien Nut Packets. Uh, they've got like pork L-E. Thereafter, the loser will choose the ma- Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Hang on just a minute. Oh, jeez. Good roll. Now we're actually ready to go. Counting down here to game number one on Simulacrum LE. Oh, yeah. This is going to be great, guys. This is going to be so good. These two players really evenly matched, and uh, both of them should have a lot to... Yeah. Look at this. All right, in the top left-hand corner, guys, of Simulacrum LE. In the blue, from Team Alpha X, repping those dragons. It's our Terran player, Masa. And his opponent in the bottom right in the red, our Zerg player from Infinity Gaming. Originally from Sweden, currently living in Canada, it is Namshar. Alpha X versus Infinity Gaming 2. Really, really uh, notable non-Korean teams right now. Hey. Honestly, with a lot of up-and-coming players, very exciting rosters. I'm jazzed. Of course, Alpha X has got a ton of players you know and love. Uh, Astrea, Cuddlebear, Zaun, Masa. And Infinity Gaming with uh, Namshar, uh, Denver, and who's their third major player? Um, I almost said Clem, but that's not right. Namshar, Denver, and uh, somebody else that I can't think of right now. While I'm in game. It'll come to me like 10 minutes from now. Anyway, both of them with really nice lineups. Should be a good battle of these two prominent North American teams. We see Massa starting out here with just a uh, pretty standard opener. Reaper coming out. Natural on the low ground. Everything in good shape. For Massa. Meanwhile, just a hatch gas pool coming down for Namshar. Everything a healthy growing Zerg needs. So TVZ in a pretty good spot right now in the metagame, honestly. I've seen a couple good TVZs lately. Uh, I saw a very bad TVZ this morning with, uh, <laughs> with Bomber and DRG. That was, whew, that was a mess. But, uh, overall, the matchup in a really solid position right now. And there's a lot of really good reasons to, to tune in. Anytime you see two top-tier players like Massa and Namshar engaging in this matchup. Queen going to pop out from Namshar. That should drive the Reaper away. Uh, third base did get down, though, behind this. Namshar sneaking out that drone in no danger at all. We got the factory going. Finished up from Massa. He's going to swap it over for the reactor. Gonna see a couple Hellions traipsing out. Second gas has been taken from Masa. And he's got that starport going down right behind it. Let's see if this Barracks puts down a tech lab if he's gonna swap over. For a little sneaky tech here. Looks like he might do just that. Ooh. Now there's no scout here. The overlords for Namsher actually in really strange places. Uh, not leaving an overlord here, as he normally would. To keep an eye on things. And just has one sitting kind of outside the main right now. He will be going, I think, the, the main to try to get a little more vision. Just, again, a bit of an odd position to put that Overlord in initially, but he's moving it into a more normal spot now. Maybe a Zerg player in the chat can tell me what's up with with the Overlord here in this high... Maybe checking to see if... Hmm. I'm really not sure why you put an Overlord there. Just keeping an eye on that top. Anyway, Namshar, moving the Overlord now into position. 
get a little bit closer. It looks like it's not going to be any sort of sneaky, weird tech out of Masa. No hell, uh, no early, like, Raven Harass, no Banshees. It is just going to be Liberator with the tech lab already researching Stim for his Marine. So Masa showing a, a, an indication that he wants to go for a little bit of early aggression. Four Hellions already out for Masa, and there's only three Queens here. Good pick off on the Creep Tumor there. Very important, of course. Uh, Namshire. Gonna replace that very quickly. A couple of Zerglings sneaking in here to the main, getting through. There's a, the wall not quite finished yet for Masa. He's gonna clean those up, and this wall is gonna say is just big enough for a third command center to come down. So Masa's gonna drop that third command center. Of course, with the wall that size, Namshire can definitely guess that Masa was gonna put his third command center down there and should know that he's gonna see bio behind this because the standard follow-up to that early third command center is gonna be three barracks. And that's what we see now coming out of Masa. He's already got Stimpak on the way, so no question. Bio coming up for Masa. Let's see what Namshire wants to do to punish that bio play just a little bit. He's got the double Evo coming down already, grabbing gases three and four at his natural and no lair tech yet. Just grabbing a fourth base, going heavy macro here on the Ling Bane style. Very impressive stuff. That Liberator in the main causing some lost mining time. He's gonna re up, try and get that queen, but Namshire very nicely microing out of there. Isn't gonna miss that queen. So many Zerg players leave that queen inside uh, the Liberator siege up range and just let it die, but Namshire on top of his game right now. Massa actually going to pick off a couple more drones here. But again, nice target firing there by Massa. Or by Namshire. Massa's going to lose that Liberator. Five kills total. Not the end of the world for either of those players. But a good initial harass by Massa. Massa, of course, did lose all his Hellions and his Reaper. Trying to dive in a little bit deep there. So, giving up a lot for those five drone kills. Namshire, I'd say, slightly ahead as his Lair Tech begins. And, wow, six Creep Tumors at a time. Goodness, he is not messing around with the Creep Spread. Creep spread, of course, the unsung hero of TVZ, or I, I will say maybe occasionally sung hero of TVZ. Uh, a lot of, I think a lot of lower level players, you know, your, your, your platinum, your diamond players will, will look at a TVZ they played, they'll watch the replay, uh, they'll watch the replay, and they'll say, I don't get it. I feel like I did everything right. My engagements were solid. Uh, my, my comp was good. My upgrades were on point. Why did I lose this game? And the answer, nine times out of ten, is going to be, look at your creep spread. You weren't as active spreading that creep as you needed to be. Every fight that happened, happened right here at your third base. So you're already backed into a corner already, eating a lot of damage. But Namshar doing a pretty good job spreading that creep out, especially off to the north side here already. Wow. Third of the way into the map, only about six and a half minutes into the game. Really well done. So this first little expeditionary force is going to poke across the map here for Massa. Infestation Pit already on the way from Namshire, and he's got a macro hatch because he knows he's going to need as many larvae as he can possibly get. At least one of those tumors is going to go down. A will to get picked off, but uh, Namshire has some uh, has some 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 banelings here ready to go, and the tanks are going to get cleaned up. This push going to get cleaned up incredibly quickly. Uh, Massa forced back home, going to lose all but two of those Marines. Ouch! What a good defense from Namshire there, Massa. Just a little bit slow on the draw, and Namshire really making the most of those banelings. Those are speedless banelings, by the way. Slow banes on creep, and he still took a really good fight there against Ma uh, Massa, who's now forced to head back home and, and hope he can get up to 2-2 quite quickly. Starting his armory a little bit late. Uh, classic mistake from Terran players there, not getting that armory out in time. So his 2-2 is going to be delayed by oh, another 30 seconds or so, but not the end of the world. Armory's a fairly quick build. Just hard to get it down just for that 2-2. Huge struggle for every Terran player. All right, the creep spread continuing here. The problem is, of course, now we get into the Ling Bane play where there's nothing to drive back these medevacs. So Massa has complete control now to keep this aggression, keep this pressure on throughout the early game. And there's really not a lot Namshire can do about it besides making him pick up and unload. And that's so difficult. Really taxing the micro of your Zerg players. The creep spread here, though, absolutely insane. A couple of those tumors are going to go down, but uh, Namshire, very quick to replant those tumors and keep that creep spread a go and already eight minutes in the map halfway covered with that creep hive tech down now for namshire or halfway done now for namshire more lings on the way going up to two two that's plus two melee attacks not missile attacks and on again there's there's really nothing here to stop those medivacs from going down so namshire is is staying solely on ling bane right now and he, he's got to get something else to fight against this bio play it's going to become much scarier once two two and some widow mines are on the way from Massa, and Massa already switching over to that Widowmine production. Needs to get Drilling Claws down and maybe another factory uh, if he's going to be up against Ling Bane, but a really nice, oh, a really nice surround here from Namshire, but again, it doesn't matter. Massa can just pick up and get out with all these medevacs. Anyway, need to see more Widowmines. There we see Drilling Claws coming out now 
from Massa. This is the right call, but will it be quick enough? He's only got that one factory down? Oh, no. Oh, no, he's got a second factory. Okay. Second factory now on the way. Building one more barracks. Again, Queens and Banelings here to drive this away. So many Banelings in the field. 18 with 13 more in production here. Namshire not messing around with those Banelings. He's got plenty of gas and he knows where he wants to use it. Ultralisk Cavern. Going to be the tier 3 tech of choice out of Namshire. Big push out. Big drop. Double drop going south for Massa. He's going to put pressure on Namshire's uh, 6 o'clock base down here at the south. Of course, with Speedlings and Banes, he should be able to drive that away. Man, your sieged up tank picking off building creep tumors. That's how you know you're, you're tearing players in a good spot with their medivacs. All right, along with that Ultralisk Cavern, we do finally see Adrenal Glands coming down. This drop will get spotted. Namshire's going to see this base and not drop at the 6 o'clock, not paying as much attention as maybe he should. It is going to force a large clump of the units back home for Namshire. He's going to have to respond to this in the main base, but, oh my god, he's not responding to this in the main base. He's finally sending a bunch of these units back once he gets the alert that his uh, drones are under attack. The, hot, the Ultralisk Cavern getting it focus fired down, though. Three, two, one. Ultralisk Cavern gets taken down. A great snipe there by Massa. This is exactly what he needs, unfortunately, for him on the other side of the map. A big Ling run by clearing out his natural, and the Ling's now making their way to the third. There's simply not enough back home, and these... Uh, Bailings and Servings gonna overrun these tanks in the middle of the map here. Oh man, I'd say an eye for an eye, but it's more like an eye for, for just a flesh wound at this point, as Namshire is getting massive damage done on Massa's side of the map. Good mineral walking, decent hold position here from both players, but these Zerglings are out for blood now. Widowmine's trying to save them. They do have the Drilling Claws upgrade, but it's not gonna be quite enough here. Namshire still running rampant Massa, losing all of his bio units. Ah, oh, the army supply way in favor of Namshire now, as the bio pushes out. 40 Four drones, have, uh, 44 SCVs have gone down, and Namshire is going to take a pretty solid game number one. Pretty solid choice there from our boy Namshire. Going up one game to zero is our Zerg. Uh, we'll take a quick second to say thanks to some more sponsors here for Alpha X Pro Series. Uh, we couldn't do this without the help of any minutes into your game playing. Uh, G Fuel has a zillion different flavors, uh, a ton of awesome flavors that you can uh, choose and we're good to go. Um, we are still waiting here on Namshire. So, so game one, Massa did such a good job. The run buys really were excited to see what Massa can do. Here in game two, both of our players are ready. Get you, uh, it'll get us 50 extra cents to the prize pool and doesn't cost you a dime. Rock and roll. Hand corner here for game number two. It's our blue Zerg player from Infinity Gaming. Currently up one to zero. Namshire. And his opponent in the bottom left in the red. From Alpha X. It's our fearless Red Terran player. Massa. Ah, thanks to Sushi for dropping that link in the chat for the Macharino. Uh, definitely helpful if you guys use up those Macharino codes and show our sponsors... That we uh, that our fans really do appreciate the content we're putting out. All right, so we got an uh, early expand here from Namshire, who has chosen Zen as map number two. Wow. Trying to get it out of the way, I think. Doesn't want to play on it later. Uh, we are playing through, uh, so this is the best of nine, which means that we're going to play each map one time. Uh, we The players can't choose a map we've already been on until uh, until the end of the series. And, and if we get to a game eight and game nine, then we can reuse one of the maps. Until that point, it is just going to be... is just going to be... Um, each map of the pool one time. I am really excited. Hoping these players take it to at least a game six and seven. So we get the chance to check out their play on Golden Wall. See what they do on Purity and Industry. Some of these new maps that are a little more unusual. A little more challenging. A little more interesting. Lots of opportunities for fun. With these new maps. Very early third for Namshire here. Very early third. About the earliest third you can get. Plopping it down around the 215 mark. Right? Do some math in my head here. Yeah, give or take the 215 mark. Now, that does mean his queen's going to be a little bit delayed, but able to save those drones and all of his zerglings. This uh, this reaper not getting a single kill from Massa. Very well defended here by Namshire. 
behind this same build as last game initially for Massa. Both gases already up. He's got the factory on the way. Going to swap over to get those double hellions out with the reactor. And I'm sure, of course, will spot that swap over happening. Starport going down behind that. Massa with the 1-1-1 one, one, one build. Again, giving himself lots of options. Interestingly, building his uh, barracks right next to the starport this time. This is a, usually an indicator that there's going to be a swap over between these two buildings. We may see Massa going for Cloak Banshees this time around. And we do see him building up a lot of gas. 215 gas already on the make. He is cranking out extra Hellions. And there it is. Starport going to swap over. Let's see if... Uh, if Namcher's ready for it. Cloak. And a Banshee. Coming out now from Massa. Behind this, Namcher getting his Baneling Nest up. Hasn't scouted these Cloak Banshees yet. Should pop in with his Overlord soon. It's about the four minute mark, which means it's high time that you go in and check out what's going on in the main base for the Terran. He may suspect what he uh, what he's seen before. Of course, he did see that factory swap over happening. Pardon me, but didn't get a bead on that starport. Behind this, Massa just finishing up his wall. First cloaked banshee about to pop out. The Overlord gonna see it? Oh my god, the Overlord sees it. If Namshire is paying attention, he will have seen that Cloak Banshee just before the Overlord pops. He's got his own Spire on the way. I don't see any Spore Crawlers coming down from him yet. He's on Lair Tech, of course, so he can get an Overseer out very soon. And one is already being made outside the Natural and the Third. Queen's gonna push away these Hellions, though. No real damage for Massa yet this game. Banshee waiting in the middle of the map. Looks like Massa wants his second Banshee to join him. Wants to wait for the um, the cloak to finish up as well. Leet Devin in the chat. What's up? Hi, man. It's good to see you. All right. More barracks popping down here. Pardon me. Second factory popping down here for Massa. Factories two and three. We're going to see mech this time out of our Terran player. Oh, and it's going to be hyper mech too. He's sticking with these banshees. Well, if he wasn't supply blocked, he'd be sticking with these banshees. And his tech lab researching hyperflight rotors already. I love me some hyper mech. Uh, let's see if Massa can pull it off. Unfortunately, the spire has not yet been scouted. He does not know that he's about to see a bunch of mutas popping out. Ooh, and Mayday. Why it's happening. First Cloak Banshee going to go down. Second Cloak Banshee is going to get into the main, but Massa still has not seen. Oh, he hasn't seen that spire yet. Oh, Massa. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Six mutas pop out immediately and start steaming across the map. Namsher going to get in here and do some massive critical damage. Banshees, of course, do well, pretty pretty badly against against Mutas, I'd say. And, oh god, there's there's is there anything on the map that shoots up right now? There are two Marines on the map right now, and that is it for Massa. Oh, Namsher, with the surprise Spire here, Massa just not prepared for it. And these Mutas are going to have so much play. Oh, man. Massa in a heap of trouble. Okay, first two Cyclones have popped out. Thank goodness. He slows down the building of these two. Uh, okay. Able to get the Cyclones out and the Widow Mines. That's going to help him a little bit. Driving those away. Whew, that was a close one for Massa. I was so worried until those two Cyclones popped out at the very, I mean, the absolute last second. Two more Cyclones coming out now that he's seen those Mutas. The Mutas should be able to find a little bit of fun. In the natural, but the cyclones will rotate around. And we see a Roach Warden coming down behind this. Namshire realizes, okay, if he's going mech, Mutalisk is going to be a little bit too too fragile. The third base, though, unprotected as those cyclones were left in the main. Oh, man, seven immediate. Seven drones going down. Uh, Widowmine shots about to hit on. Oh, man, a lot of friendly fire on those Widowmine shots. Very nicely done. Namshire about to eat some Widowmine shots, though, on the Mutalisks. Wow, the Widowmines taking out the Cyclones more than the Mutas. Oh, and the Banelings rolling in now. Cyclones coming out, but there are a lot of Zerglings here. Last of the Widowmines pops down for Massa. Namshire doing a really good job being super annoying here. Ten SCVs have gone down. He's got the Queen slow pushing over to transfuse the Mutas as well. I'm not sure if that's a mistake or if they're just chilling out there. Very odd. Fourth base on the way for Namshur. He's up on 66 drones. Look at the income. Oh, goodness gracious. Massa defending fairly well, but still losing an awful lot here. Namshur in a pretty good position as his Roach Warren finishes, and he's double expanding behind this. 
Queen's gonna get caught out there, unsurprisingly, trying to transfuse each other desperately to save as much time as they can. This is gonna open the gates, though, for another run by... Oh, man, more Lynx swarming in. The Hellbats coming out at the last second, but the Lynx already getting us around. Uh, not gonna be quite the critical mass that Namster needs, though, of those Lynx. Just gonna try and draw his enemy into the, the natural mineral line. Lings will get taken down that run by not doing as much as maybe I thought it was. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Third base now getting established, but 10 more Mutus in production now. We see Roach Speed coming out from Namshire, but no Roaches on the map yet, actually. Zero Roaches. Just kind of waiting until he needs a little more bulk in his army. Banshee's still rotating around, but plenty of spores out. Shouldn't be able to do too much here. Hyperflight Rotor's not really showing their, showing their worth in today's uh, best of nine yet. Oof. Scanning and using your Banshees to clear creep tumors. Never where you want to be as a Terran player, but sometimes it's your best option. All right, this seriously, this Muta Flock looks terrifying. Widowmine shots onto the Mutas. Very nicely done. This Widowmine's going to get a couple kills. We'll get cleaned up. Cyclone's coming in. Trying to wheel backward here. There's only three Cyclones, though, and this these uh, Widowmines are in huge, or these, these Mutas, rather, are in huge numbers. The last of the Cyclones going to get picked off, and now, as we said before, there's just so little that shoots up right now. Massa desperately trying to make some Thors, but he's got two on the way, but they are just getting started. Nothing in the main base. Oh, no, and that means the Widowmine going to pop out here. Going to be very late. Uh, these mutilists can just go to town. Pick off the widow mine. There is uh, some some uh, missile turrets here in the natural mineral line to try and save it. There should be one in the main as well. Oh god, there's no no nothing in the main, and the mute is simply going to be too much. I don't know how Massa comes back from this. Uh, these mute is just absolutely eating his lunch. They can probably magic box this one. It doesn't even matter. Namshire takes a quick game too. Here on two zero already the gamut of. Empire for map number three. So let's get in here in the top right hand corner, currently down. Zero games to two. It's our Alpha X Terran player in the blue. It's Massa. And his opponent in the bottom left in the red. Playing as Zerg from Infinity Gaming. It's our red player, Namshar. All right. So we'll see what Massa does this game. Um, hasn't busted out any cheese or any aggressive strategies yet. He's just kind of been playing very, very passive for the last two games. Been taking his time, being cautious. And taking it slow. We'll see if that's the case again here in game number three. Orbital on the way. Should see the command center on the low ground. Looks like Massa saving up for that 400 minerals. And there we go. Unharassed, though. No, no Zerglings on the way yet from Namshire, as he did go again. Hatch, gas, pool. The very standard macro build this game. Namshire's looked very confident so far. In the early and the mid game. Haven't really seen a late game yet out of these players. Massa slowing down, or trying to slow down the building of that third uh, third hatchery area. Namshire should see that with his overlord, and will send some lings out to clear it up. Or should send some lings out to clear it up. Meanwhile, the Reaper biding its time. Going to wait and see if those lings take the bait and go over. Oh, he is going to NG bait block this third base. Interesting play from Massa here. Who wants to slow down Namshire's economy this game, and see if he can get a jump on him a little ahead. In fact, look at this. Yeah. So he's going to get that almost all the way finished there. Those Lings held at bay by this Reaper, who's taking a little bit of damage, but doing a good job zoning Namshire out right now. And this Engineering Bay going to get almost all the way finished. Really, really well done by Massa. That's a lot of hit, a lot of hit points to chip through if you're the Zerg player. And we're going to see what that forces here out of Namshire. He's got Ling Speed on the way, making a queen. The Reaper should be able to pop in.
man. Second queen pulled. It's going to take four lings as well to clear this out. Man, Massa going to slow this way down. Let's see what he's doing behind this. Again, a 1-1-1 one, one, one out of Massa. Got the natural orbital command already started up. Early lair tech on the way from Namshire. That second gas getting taken quite quickly. He's left these drones in gas, by the way. And has uh, finished serving speed. Leaving the drones in gas. Resaturating this next, next extractor immediately. Indicating that he wants some tech here quite soon. Massa pushing away these queens. Two Hellions and a Reaper. That NG base still in position. Finally cancelled. For Namshire. Very well done by Namshire. Keeping his opponent on two bases. Third base on the way now. For Namshire. Massa going to get a queen there? Oh man. Almost getting a queen. He's going he's gonna to pick off a drone though. Very well done. Man. Massa is the one this time who's bringing the hurt to his opponent. Spire from Namshire. And the way this drone is coming out, it looks like it is going to be two base Spire, because I don't know if he's going to be able to save it. Oh, man. Massa being so annoying, getting his third base down back home. Liberator coming out. The Liberator will get spotted. And finally, finally, the drone going to start that third base from Namshire at the four minute and 45 second mark. A very late third. For our Swedish Zerg player. Back home for our Terran, we see three barracks. We are going to see an early stim. And it looks like Widow Mines. Oh, that's a tech lab. Never mind. More Cyclones out of Massa. Who I think is probably worried about some sort of roach aggression behind this. Which is entirely possible. The Liberator stopping uh, stopping mining at the natural. Baneling Nest on the way for uh, Namshire. That Spire finishes. And Namshire's got about 600 gas banked up. Immediately four roaches pop out. Needs a few more minerals. Of course, his mineral's a bit delayed due to his delayed mining time, but should be able to get up to six mutas, seven mutas here pretty quick and get across the map again. We don't see a lot that shoots up yet for Massa. He's got about five marines, which is not enough. Two more barracks coming down, but his production facility is right now fairly quiet. He's getting a tank out as well. Mute is heading over. Now, by the time the mutas get here, the marine number should be up to about 9 or 10. So, with good control, Massa should be able to defend against these mutas. But if he's not paying attention, if he tries to move out, if he's in the wrong position, these mutas can certainly sneak in and do some real damage in the main. Namshire's mutas coming across the map now. Plus one flyer attack has begun. So, uh, Massa, not joking around. Uh, pardon me, Namshire. Not joking around with these Mutalisks. He's going to slow down the building of one of those barracks and get straight up into the main mineral line here. Massa not responding in time, pulling all those SCVs a little bit late. Losing three SCVs so far, make it four. The Marines here will drive those meta, uh, those Mutas away, but nice work there by Namshire. Driving Massa back. Massa with a pretty good defense. Pick off one more drone. Keep that kill count going. Get some shots off on the tank. But with the uh, missile turret here in the natural... Is going to get forced away. Behind this, the Liberator re-sieging for Massa and will get up and get out. Good pulls, though, by Namshire. Staying active. Namshire's Mutus still doing work here, picking off a free tank. This is a huge stim out of Massa. He's stimmed these Marines three times now. Just trying to get him to save these, uh, save his units against these Mutalisks. The Mutalisks still... Oh, my God. Look how aggressive Namshire is being right now. Uh, picking off SCVs. Massa forgetting to queue this command center. It's like it's Brood War all over again. Oh, man. Armory coming down now. Four master to get those 2-2 two -two upgrades started. But things are looking good again for Namshire. He's ahead on drones. He is ahead on... Uh, army supply as well. His upgrades are going to be even soon. Mutalisks. Popping back out again. <laughs> Apparently, Africa TV is telling us that we're the number one broadcast with the most silent viewers. You guys must really be enjoying this StarCraft action as you're stuck inside today. <laughs> All right, we've got the hatchery on the low ground. 
uh, for Namshire. That's going to be his one, two, three, four, fifth hatchery. Uh, he is just expanding like a madman, still just three bases out for Massa. Massa, of course, does have those missile turrets up now, so this beetle is going to try and pick off what they can, but I uh, should get zoned out. Actually, going to pick off a, uh, an, a refinery there where he can. You guys don't have to chat. It's nice to have you here. I don't mind if you're chatting or not. It's, I just thought it was funny that Africa has a little notification. That we have very quiet, well-behaved viewers like you guys are all students in a classroom. And I'm your StarCraft teacher. <laughs> Alright, Hellbat's out for Massa. He's only got two medivacs, though. Liberator again picking off a couple drones here. Massa's got to be cautious. Sending the queen around. He's going to draw his army back. Oh, Massa with a little bit of ba a bad army control there. He's going to allow some of these units to get onto creep here. Good creep uh, denial by Massa. Namshire not spreading creep quite as efficiently as he was in game one. Also a drop into the main. The queen focus firing down the medivac very nicely. The medivac very low on health right now. 30, 22. He's going to pick up and try and redrop here. But there's pressure on the bottom base of Namshire as well. Namshire's fourth base now under assault. A couple Banelings crashing in, but there's only a few queens here to defend against this. And yeah, Namshire getting pulled back and forth right now. He's going to clean up the attack in the main. And this attack of the natural is going to eat, uh, eat a lot of damage. 15 drones have already gone down. The bio number, I was going to say, was very small. But now we see reinforcements coming in here from Massa. And I think Namshire might just wait until there's a little more damage on his base before engaging. Should set up. Yeah, he's going to set up on the high ground here. There's no high ground vision for Massa. Zergling's going to come in, flanking these tanks, in behind the tanks, behind both tanks. Mutalisks helping to pick off the bio, and that attack going to get cleaned up handily. Uh, Massa being just way too aggressive there. Didn't quite have the critical mass he needed. And these mutas going to pick off the retreating medevacs. All four of them. Oh, no. all Well, two of them are going to go down. Uh, God, so low. I thought he was going to get all four of them there, but still two medevacs alive. And Namshire pushing around now. Drilling Claws on the way for Massa. 3-3 three, three on the way as well. Our Terran player in good shape with the upgrades. We see 3-3 three, three and Adrenal Glands on the way for, uh, for Namshire here. Beetlesks again trying to see what they can do. Getting some shots off on those medevac. Keeping that medevac number very, very low. Look at the unit counting station here. Only five medevacs out for Massa. Ooh, Namshire could really find a good position. Maybe snipe these engineering bays if he's careful. That's going to leave some of the uh, units back home for Massa. Namshire's creep spread still about where it was five minutes ago, which isn't great. Obviously, wants to be pushing that creep spread. Eternal Empires are really hard map to spread that creep on, though. Uh, once you get up to this high ground, it, it can be a little hard to push into the low area. Just a very broad map. Certain things in here. The Planetary Fortress not finished up. Nice mineral walking by Massa, saving almost all of those SCVs. Very well done. And Massa again on the offensive. He's got a really, really nice army at this point. Namshire's been trying to pump up his drone number. He's going to be caught a little bit by surprise here, I think, by Massa's entirely larger army than his. The first five Ultras on the way, though, for Namshire. And once those Ultras get out, he's going to have a really good shot. There aren't a lot of Marauders mixed in. In fact, Massa, with just one Marauder mixed into his army, uh, he isn't even producing Marauders right now. Uh, so these uh, these Ultras could actually do really good damage. The Medivac going to get picked off there. The drop's still alive, though. That Queen going to be in a bit of trouble as we see Namshire, Namshire and Massa engaging. At the uh, 6 o'clock base, the inside 6 o'clock base for Namshire. Banelings put forward now. Banelings again going to try and clean this army up. Massa not keeping his army together. There are little battalions here and there, but not enough. First Marauders finally starting to get mixed in here. Massa putting pressure all over the place. This bottom 12 o'clock base is going to get taken down, I assume. Oh, good Baneling shot, though. Will save that Namshire unbelievably saving these bases with so little health. The Ultras are now here, and this is looking better and better for Namshire. Widow Mine's going to go down those Ultralisks, but, you know, just, just a tickle for those boys. Eight drones have been picked off. Massa still in really good position. Marauder numbers starting to increase a little bit here. Good kiting from Massa all the way back home. I think one Ultra's gone down now. No, no Ultras have gone down yet. Goodness gracious. That choke point, unbelievably, actually being uh, really useful. Well, unbelievably, being very useful for the Terran players, zoning out those Ultralisks. Fourth base on the way. Planetary Fortress behind it. Fifth base coming out for Massa. 
Again, Ultra's engaging, but Stim versus Ultra's means that uh, Namcher going to lose a lot here. No Concussive Shell yet out for um, for Massa, which is interesting. Once you start getting Marauders, you really want that Concussive Shell upgrade, especially against Ultra's. No additional transitions out for Namcher, by the way. The Spire's here, but no Greater Spire. No Infestation upgrades. So Namcher, I think, pretty committed right now to this Ultra Ling Bane style. And we gotta see if he can make it work. He is staying alive. Got a lot of Banelings morphing in now. 27 Banelings morphing in. A bunch on the low ground. Down here, rolling up to the high ground. We do see the attack on the fourth base now. The Planetary Fortress is gonna eat a lot of Ultralisk shots here. The SCV is forced to be uh, evacuated here. The fourth base is certainly gonna go down there. The drop from Masa unable to unload because the Ultras are already there. But now the real bio forces are here and these Ultralisk have to get away. Namcher, of course, off of creep. Does have speed for those Ultras, but it doesn't do him too much, uh, doesn't do too many favors. Mutalisk is picking off the 5th base as well. This could be a really nice turning point for Namshire. Picking off 2 of the bases for his opponent. That 5th command center on fire now. 7 SCVs going down at the same time. Needs an overseer here to clean these Widow Mine fields up. Massa staying in position. Alright. Muta again here to pick off the uh, the remaining medevacs there. Nicely cleaned up by Namshire. Namshire a little behind in the army supply. And now Massa's army looking scarier and scarier. This is going to come down to positioning. What are these Banelings doing? Okay, he's trying to get the Banelings in, I guess, to get on top of some of the SCVs. Uh, but he's just going to use most of them on, uh, on reinforcement units coming through. And that's not a great kill. However, this really is the movement into the fourth base. Again, forcing that fourth base liftoff from Massa, forcing him to cancel the planetary fortress that was being built there, and will land it and start that planetary again. But at what cost? Damster's actually thrown away a lot of his army supply right now. A very scrappy game from both these two players. We see the first corruptors coming onto the field now with plus two flyer attack coming out. This Ultralisk overstaying its welcome a bit for Namshir. Overstaying its welcome a bit for Namshir. A lot of Banelings morphing in. These probably shouldn't finish. Namshire should cancel all these Banelings. I don't think any of them are going to get made. And uh, that's free money there for Namshire, for Massa. But uh, Namshire continuing to take pretty good fights here. Massa, again, without enough me uh, without enough Marauders mixed into the army, is going to have trouble fighting against these Ultralisks. He's down to just seven Marauders and three Marines. Meanwhile, Namshire adding on a bunch of Corruptors to pick off the Medivacs. Almost all of Massa's army supply is in Medivacs right now. He's got ten Medivacs and nothing else. He's got two Medivacs per Marauder. He's down to almost no army. And we're going to see Namshire remaxing here. A lot of Corruptors coming out. A lot of Banelings out. And uh, that's GG Namshire. Going to take game three. Oof. Looking a little rough for our Alpha X boy right now. Dink, you can log in using any of your social media accounts. You don't have to create a new SNS account. And then all you have to do, APS159, and that'll add 50 magic. So anything y'all can do. I will also say, as we're all stuck inside, as the, the world burns down around us, uh, it's important. Make sure that your blood is flowing, that you're keeping yourself healthy. Uh, make sure that you're keeping yourself healthy. Do some stretching for a bit. Just take care of yourselves, guys. Uh, we're in a really weird spot as humanity right now. And it's important that we all stand up and stretch and make sure. Asa says go, and I agree. Let's get this going here. Game number four. Coming at us now on Nightshade. L My toes. Oh, come on. You can do it. Yes. Woo. All right. All right, let's get into this. Girls game number four, Namshire with a commanding lead, but let's see if our boy from Alpha X can pull it back in the bottom, right hand corner in the blue, playing from Alpha X, it's our Terran player, Massa. And his opponent in the top left in the red, from Infinity Gaming and Sweden, although he's currently living in Canada, our Swedish player, Namshire. I love this music. So good. The Terran soundtrack is incredible. Neil Acree and David, um, no, Justin Hayes, Jason Hayes. 
You guys are amazing. Oh, mad props. Big shout out. The StarCraft 2 music team. I know I'm setting a really bad example. I'm, I, I touch my face all the time right now, so please don't call me out on it, chat. It's just that I have this, I've had this beard now for six or eight weeks, I think. I don't know how long it's been, but it's getting to be just really annoying. All, all dry and itchy and ugh. Cannot wait to shave. Uh, tomorrow is the big day. Ugh, finally getting rid of this thing. It's been, it's been hanging on my face for too long. Alright, we've got a second barracks coming out completely. No Reaper out at all for Massa. Just going for Marines and getting a reactor here. Should see a tech lab? Oh no, never mind. Just going for a reactor. On this barracks, we're going to see a lot, a lot of Marines popping out for Massa. Ha! <laughs> Juvader. Hey, thanks for sharing the code, Juvader. I appreciate it, man. Uh, any support we can get for these series is, is much appreciated. It's good to see you, by the way, man. I haven't done a stream here on Africa TV for the Alpha Pro series in quite some time. And it feels real nice to be back. Alright, Tech Lab and Stim coming out immediately for Massa. No uh, scout either for Namshire. Both these players flying blind right now. Just executing their builds and hoping they don't get uh, pretty lucky. Namshire with a pretty early third base will finish up in good time. And uh, third barracks? Third barracks coming out for Massa now. So Massa actually going for a much earlier aggression than his opponent. Now Namshur should get in to scout this if he's if he's cautious. See, there we go. As soon as Overlord Speed finishes, he jolts in and will see the starport, but will also see all. Th was he going to see all three barracks? Okay, he just sees two barracks, but should maybe suspect that there's more on the way. That's an awful lot of Marines very early out of this build. We're going to see a double marine drop out of Massa. Namshur, however, has a lot of lings across the map right now. He's cut drone production completely. He's got his baneling nest started up. We're going to see a baneling bust out of Namshur. It's baneling bust versus early uh, early marines. Baneling nest finishing up just as the Zerglings get in here. Good surface area by those Zerglings. The mineral walking from Massa, not quite good enough. And he's going to lose a lot of SCVs right off the bat here. Seven SCVs go down for the cost of just a few Zerglings there. So uh, 20 Lings go down, but the Banelings are now here. Massa does not have combat shields yet. He's starting at NG Bay to finish off his wall. That's the right choice. Massa knows that he needs to save that wall. Or save those, uh, save those SCVs any way he can. And if that means that Banelings are going to have to bust down this wall, so be it. But there's a lot of Marines here. Bainlings coming into the weak... Oh my god, the wall's not finished. There's a gap in the... Oh my god, Masa. Make it a huge mistake. Trying to move these... Oh god, the SCV train is going to go down. So many mules not finishing up. The Bainlings all crashing down. Zerglings are going to get pushed away now. One Bainling still alive. Good focus fire there from Masa, picking off the Bainling. But the Marines forced all the way backward now. The Zerglings in the natural base, stopping the mining. Should slow down all of this. Going to pick off one of the NG bays to open up that wall a little bit further. And it's nothing... Okay, it's behind this. We see drones coming down for Namshur, so he knows the damage is done. He's up six workers. He stopped mining at the natural. He's picked off an NG bay. Both players sort of juking right now. Double Evo Chamber going down for Namshur on the other side of the map. And I don't know, Namshur, I feel like a couple of good Banelings here could just end this game. But he's going to be more cautious than that. Just getting out drones, drones, drones back home. Double Evo Chamber. Third base getting saturated up now. Uh, no second gas taken yet, so indicating that he wants to stay on Ling Bane for a while. No additional Bane since that first round, by the way. So nothing to actually bust this wall. Massa, of course, wanted to have these, uh, have these Marines loaded up into a drop. And be sending him across the map by now. But unfortunately, caught a little bit by surprise by his opponent's aggression. Massa pushing Namshur away here. Liberator coming out again from Massa. Massa's had pretty good luck with Liberator Harass this game. Namshur's been a little bit slow, a little bit pokey on his uh, 
on his drone pulls from those Liberators. So we gotta see if Namshir can defend his drone lines against those Liberators again. Fourth base on the way from Namshir. Plus one, plus one, already starting up for both players. Combat Shield's about to finish for Massa, and Massa's gonna hit with a pretty bulky timing here, actually. Plus one Marines. That fourth base probably gonna get canceled. I don't know that there's quite enough here. No Banelings on the map, actually. And yeah, an immediate cancel there. And Massa's gonna call that a Massa's gonna call that a win and just get out. I sounded like I was from North Dakota there for a minute. Massa. Massa's gonna call that a win. Oh! Gonna get that fourth base again, too. What a snipe. What a snipe from Massa. Oh! Wonderful play. So well done. Picks up and gets right back out. Oh. You know he's so good. That Liberator at the natural now. Pushed away by the... Okay, sorry. Pushed away by the Queen of Namshire. Um, a couple of Queens popping down. Massa with some decent damage. And he's picking up for a Doom Drop into the natural. Spore Crawler is here to defend. Queen rotating around. The Banelings going to be finished in time. The Banelings immediately rot rotating around. But these are slow Banelings. Which means it's going to give plenty of time for Massa to pick up and get back out. Uh, wow, Massa really doing a good job here. Namshire just on three bases. Now, Massa has no third base of his own yet. He's starting that third command center, but it's not in place. Armory down for the plus two upgrades as we see more barracks. Springing up Massa up to four barracks now. And the marine count continues to grow. But as Banelings uh, continue to grow as well, as Baneling speed finishes up, we're going to see Namshire in a better and better position as the game goes on. There's a Liberator uh, heading into the main now from the top side. That should get spotted immediately. Very aggressive plays here from Massa. He keeps losing little bits and bobs of his Marines, but more and more coming to join him every day. Tank on the high ground now. Massa really putting some good pressure here onto this space between where the third and the fourth wants to be. Remember, Namshire forced take this fourth at 12 o'clock. The Liberator in the main should get pushed away by the Queen. The Queen stepping just out of Liberator fire. A couple of uh, larva will go down, but oh, there it is. Mass is going to get out of there alive, but look at this. Uh, a couple of Marines are here, but the gates are down. These Marines going to get completely surrounded, and these Zerglings now able to have a field day. The natural again of Namshire is going to get just eviscerated. As the Banelings come forward, they will get focus fire down by that tank. Nicely done by uh, Massa, but Namshire loose in his natural now. We'll get cleaned up. Forcing more lost mining time, though. Picking off one supply depot. Maybe a second if it burns down. And uh, this game very, very close as the two players go for the fight. The 12 o'clock base has been canceled, by the way, from uh, from Namshire. Trying to rebuild his fourth base here in the inside pocket. Third base established, though, for Massa. As those Zerglings get driven away. Massa in good position here in game four. Ooh, Namshire actually with some bad pathing there. Gonna lose a few units. And this fourth base still isn't done. The creep spread still not quite far enough. That means the Zerglings gonna try and come in here, but good target firing on the Banelings. And Massa gonna have his way with this army of the Zerg. The Zerglings finally getting on top of the Marines, but I think the critical mass of Marines is just enough to drive this away. Oh man, the men from mine, the, the Zerglings critical mass just enough to drive this away. And again, we see Massa in a really unusual spot where he's got more medevacs than he does individual bio units. He's got six Marines on the map right now. These four Marines that he's going to lose are the bulk of his Marine forces uh, as he's trying to kick more out of his barracks. But man, Namshire looking so good on the ground right now. Massa overproducing on those medevacs early in the game. And it's really showing. Really, I think at this point, Namshire is just trying to lead him around, just distract him a little bit. Maybe so we can set up a flank later, but the fourth base now established for Namshire. Third base on the way for, or finished up for Massa though as well. Orbital Command coming down. So he's at good nick. And Hydralisk Den finally coming out for Namshire. We, we, we finally see some Tier 2 tech. And it is delightful. A little Zergling run by at the bottom third base of uh, of Massa here. Bailings coming in and... Oh, yeah. Those SCVs have got to be very cautious. The Bailings all get murdered. Nice work by Massa to push those back. Hydra, Des Hydra Den is finished. No Hydras out or on the way. For Namshire, I think he's waiting to commit to Hydras. Just wants to drone up right now and saturate that fourth base. 14 drones at a time. Insane. Absolutely insane. But the SCV and mule count, not too shabby either. Three bases to four. This game's still incredibly close. Small force of Marines coming in. Again, trying to pin Massa against this fourth base. Massa, however... 
moving around with a little zerg being run by these are gonna head out behind him he is gonna flank mass at there are nothing there's nothing to pick away these um nothing to pick away the medivacs and yet again another big force up a big forced pickup out of massa again good defense so far here from namshire liberator at the third base gonna force a pull away of the drones there good response time by namshire Queen's focus fired down. That's really smart from Mass. Of course, the Queen's the only thing that can shoot at these Metafacts right now until more Hydras come out. And look at that. More Hydras are coming out now. 13 of them on the way. Mass's Liberator getting pushed back into that little dead zone. The Queen might be able to spike it from there. And, ooh, Massa, yeah, forced to get away. Will escape with his life, though. Fourth base finished up. And now fully saturated from Namshire. Could stand to get the gases taken. He does have uh, four gases taken already, though. Six gases taken already. Just not quite saturated. Yeah, they're coming down now. Massa again with a big push here. But with no tanks, it's very difficult to sustain these pushes for too long. And now that the Hydralisks are out, I'm really worried about Massa's position. He's going to see those Hydras pick up and move straight up to higher ground right away. Liberator gets picked out of the main. Final three drone kills for his service. Bailing's cleaning up those uh, unsupported Marines. Again, the medevac count for Massa, absolutely insane. Nine medevacs out for just, you know, not enough bio forces. Namshire could stand to do another run by. There's not much back home to defend. One Liberator. So I'd like to see, yeah, I'd like to see Namshire setting up for a run by. Of course, the sensor tower should buy Massa a little bit of time to respond to this. Oh my god, he's just going straight to the natural. Interesting choice there from Matt, from uh, Namshire not to go into the third base, which is likely less defended. He's going to cut off some of these reinforcements, though. Keeping the army numbers of Massa fairly low. Might even get a tank here if he's lucky. Oh, the tank barely surviving. Finally, the tank's getting mixed in for Massa. He's up to three now. However, Hydras have so much DPS. Can't pick off those tanks quite quickly. Going to become a positioning war. I think Namshire, though, with a superior army Cobb uh, and Massa the superior positioning. The Liberator is going to be the most problem for Namshire as he does still have... Are they slow? Oh no, he has got the speed for those Hydras, so he's good. Fifth base down. It's still hard to get Hydras in underneath Liberators, especially with a map like Nightshade that has some of these very tiny choke points leading into the fourth base for our Zerg player. And here we go. The, 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 what could be the final engagement from our Zerg player, Namshire, just pushing forward here. Liberators finally have the Hydralisk underneath them there. The Hydralisk going to try and pick him down. The Liberators doing some nice damage. Nine kills, but the Queens are there, and they are going to finish picking off those Liberators. A costly attack, but a worthwhile one, I think, for our Zerg player, who's going to leave all these tanks out. And uh, that leaves so many Zerglings on the map right now. Almost the entire army supply of our Terran player wrapped up in Liberators and Medivacs. 9 o'clock base finished up for Namshire. Masa pushing across the map now. Masa's been trying to keep this pressure on. He's done a good job pushing back the creep spread. Look at the creep spread from Namshire. We're already at 15 minutes into the game. The creep spread very, very anemic. The Zerglings coming through now, going straight to the natural. Or straight to the third, rather. This is drawing all of Masa's army units back home. All of Masa's army units. He's got just a, 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 a token fighting force up front. The Liberator going to go down. We'll get cleaned away even though Massa pushes off. Grab some creep tumors. This still gives Namshire enough time to rotate down to protect his newly hatched 5th base. Liberator coming into his 5th base from the back. Oh no, he's just going into the natural. Trying to juke him around a little bit, but again, a good spread here. The Hydra's chasing those, um, chasing those medevacs away. The medevacs able to escape, of course, off creep. 12 o'clock base has been established for Namshire. Good target firing here from Massa, picking off most of those Banelings. In fact, all the Banelings getting picked off. Just one little lonely Baneling in the background. Hydra's picking down the, the Medivacs as and when they can. Tank, Siege tank on the high ground. A couple tanks on the low ground. The spread pretty good from Massa, actually. And Namshire forced back here. Massa building up a pretty good army in the time that uh, we see Namshire getting his sixth base up and running. Liberator again with some nice harass. Massa keeping those Liberators harassing on the far side of the map. That's really nice. Scan going down. Massa now with a large army. Namshire's got to try and get some sort of run by to try and distract him, pull him back. He needs to buy himself a little bit more time to get this Adrenal Glands upgrade and 3-3 on the way. 3-3 already finished from Massa, and that means that these um, 
means these marines are terrifying. 3-3 three, three marines, of course, always terrifying. The third base under assault now is going to lose some SCVs, some more mining time going down, but I'm not sure if Massa cares right now. His army supply is significantly higher than his opponent. 11 SCVs going down, and that's going to chase Namsher all the way back, but Namsher should be able to get on top of this siege tank and actually pick off a couple of these uh, units. Oh, nice. Again, Namsher forcing a pickup, but is he sacrificing too much here? Massa, man, is in such a good position, just unable to really make things happen this game. Namsher taking a good fight, but Massa continuing to snowball. The army supply of Massa getting out of control right now. Namsher trying to do his best to keep up. A good drop here. Highly stimmed on the top corner from Massa. Namsher is going to clean that one up, but at what cost? 45 army supply to 98. We see nothing but Lingbane Hydra now out of Namsher. Namsher with no additional, like, really bulky units to support this Lingbane Hydra. And he simply doesn't have a big enough... Oh, man. Good bailing hits, though. Really good bailing hits from Namsher. He just doesn't quite have enough critical mass in his army to make this work. The last of the tanks should get picked down, though. Namsher very low on tanks right now. The fifth base might fall. But it looks like he's gunning just for the army right now. The Hydralisks will stay alive, pushing the medevacs back yet again. Oh, man. This is such a tight game. This is such a tight game. Uh, another commands that are coming down from Massa here. The Planetary Fortress going down at that 6 o'clock position. The Hydra just need to pick off a lot of these medevacs. The medevac count for Massa actually helping him out more than I would have thought earlier. Hydra's, oh, getting caught there. That's a rough loss, though, for Namesher. Taking a fight off of Creep, and the reinforcement from Massa going to push him back. 3-3 finally about to finish for Namesher. But is it too late? 45 army supply. Every last ounce of energy that Namesher has going straight into his army. He's low on... Larva, and it looks like he's backed up against the wall here. Massa, gonna push him back, and there's the GG. Massa, finally getting a point on the board. We're gonna see the score go to three. Pressure. Namsher still in a good spot for most of the game. Uh, very, very even stuff. Very even stuff indeed. Nice work. 5-9. My name is Creighton Olson. If you want to follow me on Twitter, my Twitter handle is right there. I uh, stream mostly on twitch.tv under twitch slash Creighton Olson. Uh, but if you follow me on Twitter, a lot of StarCraft, something like, I don't have the exact numbers in front of me, but I've casted something like 200 hours of StarCraft in the last two months. Uh, it has been an absolute joy to bring this action to you, and just so much fun. It's always a joy to bring more StarCraft action to StarCraft fans across the globe. All right, guys, getting in here to game number five. In the bottom... Left-hand corner of Everdream LE in the blue. It's our Terran player finally putting some points up on the board. Getting a hit back against Apollo Creed. It's our Rocky from Alpha X. Massa. And his Ivan Drago in the top right-hand corner. In the red from Infinity Gaming. Our Swedish Zerg player. Namshar. Damn sure, going pool first. Now, not 12th pool, but pool first. Nonetheless, a very sneaky move from our Zerg player, Namshar. Looking to put early pressure on. This will be the first game we have seen real, true blue. Early pressure out of Namshar. First gas going down. Zergling speed on the way, I imagine, very quickly. natural hatchery after that the first reaper coming out massa not skipping the reaper scout this time so he is going to see the early pool but it looks like he is also going for that low ground command center and he's going to start committing to building this now what namshar wants to do with that early roach warren is not just slow down the building of the natural command center but hopefully end the game now luckily if you go early roach warren on one gas it means that you're not like out of the game yet even if your your attack doesn't win completely it does depend largely on what your Terran opponent does. So let's see what else Massa has coming for him. Behind this, if he plays in the greedy Massa style that we've seen, he's going to drop a factory and then a reactor, and it's going to be a long time before he gets anything else out. And these Zerglings that have gone the slow way around the south side might catch Massa by surprise. Namsher sure going to pick off this low ground command center. Second Marine coming out from Massa. That's a good sign. This low ground commands are almost certainly going to be slowed down, if not cancelled completely. The Zerglings are here. The Reaper pulled all the way back home to defend, but did he see the surprise waiting for him in that main base? He did not. There are five roaches now on the way. Oh, Massa. Massa, you have got to act fast. This is not the right response to this. Oh, no. I think he's seen the Zerglings and thinks, okay, it's just Zergling pressure. 
I can get this third command. Oh my god, is he gonna save the natural command center? No way. No way! Massa saves the third command, natural command center and puts a third on the top. That's actually really bad for him. If he had canceled this, he'd have 1,300 extra minerals uh, with which to build some things that fight roaches. He's getting a tech lab on the factory. That could be a good sign, but the roaches are already here. The Reaper has spotted them. Double bunkers immediately going down to the high ground for Massa. The natural command center is gonna, on the low ground is going to be forced up to the high ground. Third CC on the way. Tech lab about to finish out. Cyclone should be coming out quite quickly. He could go siege tank as well. Bunker number one not going to finish. Bunker number two under duress. Roaches have arrived. Supply depot again under fire. Bunker getting finished up here on the high ground. There is one, mar three marines left rather. Uh, and one marine is going to make it in to that first bunker. Reaper going to join the bunker as well. But there are still some roaches. Oh, some roaches and a ravager left. Odd lag for me. I hope the players didn't get that. But now Namshire into the main base of Massa. Massa down to just 15 SCVs. Siege tank pops out, and that should drive the roaches back. What a defense by Massa. What a defense by Massa. Immediate, immediately sacking both bases. Namshire still just on two bases. Two queens coming out behind this. He's ahead on drones. Significantly ahead on drones there. Cranking out a lot of drones behind those roaches. But no third base. The third base just now going down. The Reaper popping across to see what the hell happened. We'll get in. Sees that serving speed was skipped, of course. Probably knew that already. Good save on the drone. By Namshire. That Reaper thinking he could double cross the, the Queen, but the Queen too slick for him. Nice defense there. Good block by Namshire. Pulling those drones off the line very quickly to drop the Reaper from going through. Allowing that Queen to get up and get the last hit. Now, three command centers are online for Massa, so he can re uh, rebuild his economy much more quickly, but he has lost eight SCVs already. The income advantage in favor of Namshire. But not, not, uh, horrifically so. That's for sure. Massa, I think, trying to decide what to do next. Really, he's got a fusion core coming down, so he needs to swap over and get those, uh, get the starport onto the tech lab for those battle cruisers. Should be saving up the gas for it as well. 150 gas in the bank. Only two gases taken. Grabbing that third at the natural. He's going to need it if he wants battle cruisers off of two bases. Namshire just sitting back right now. Adding on some more uh, some more roaches. Taking his time. Double Evo Chamber. Zerging speed. Spreading that creep. Doing everything a man could do if you're a Zerg man. Namshire with no Overlord speed, though, is going to be a little bit hard-pressed to get into this... Oh, my God. To get into this Fusion Core, the second Starport, finishing up now. Wait, what can they have? Nah. Namshire. Songman Say. I'm going to say oh. Hi. Welcome. It's good to have you. All right, so Namshire has not seen this battle cruiser, this double battle play from Massa. Namshire's overlord is going to get in here. Let's see if Massa has enough to drive this way. He's got some marines coming in, but I think Namshire's overlord is going to see at least one medevac or one um, battle cruiser in the make. He might suspect that this is um yeah he's not going to see that fusion core though. Very key. He didn't scout that fusion core, and the fusion core immediately seeing that it didn't get scouted, Massa's going to start Yamato cannon. Fourth base down for Namshire though. He's got spores coming down already, thinking that I, th I, I I suspect that Namshire suspects it's going to be Cloaked Banshees, but it is not going to be Cloaked Banshees. Faking that cloak, yeah, really nicely done from Massa. Second Battlecruiser about to pop out. Now the question is going to be, if the second Battlecruiser comes through... And if they both teleport together or if they teleport to different locations, both can be good strategies. More often these days, I see uh, Terran players keeping their battle cruisers together and trying to get double damage done on queens, uh, maybe even picking down spores. I also personally love the play of 
separating them up to different bases. Uh, but they are just going to go for it here. And let's keep an eye on what Massa can do. Namster, of course, with massive, massive queen response to this. In fact, these battlecruisers are going to be in a little bit of trouble already, as there are so many queens here. Great focus fire by Namster. Battlecruiser 1 going to fall down. Second battlecruiser under duress as well. This overseer marking that battlecruiser like, you came to the wrong neighborhood, pal. The last of the transfuses has gone down, though. The battlecruiser with, what, two kills? A drone, an overseer, and a queen now? Oh my gosh. Trying to get into this uh, third base here. Massa not spotting the fourth base. Rotating back around the battlecruiser, barely still alive. Second, oh, Spire is going to get spotted, though, of course. Massa with good eyes should see that Spire finishing up. And the battlecruiser, oh, gets it. Nice work there from Namshar. Picking off two battlecruisers. A third battlecruiser has arrived. It is doing massive, massive economic damage here in the third base. The queen number is getting slowly lower and lower as these battlecruisers from Massa continue across the map. But is it going to be enough? It's 80 drones against just 65 CVs for Massa. Good saves on these drones from Massa, by the way. Getting a couple extractors down a little before he needs them, but the queen is going to pick off this battlecruiser as well. Massa diving so hard with this double battlecruiser double battle cruiser build. He's picked off 14 drones, but is it worth it for three battle cruisers? I don't know, man. I don't know. Behind this Massa, getting that mech. Sorry, uh, my, my Korean is very, very bad, Songmen say. I, I will not be able to, to talk, to understand most of what you're saying in Korean in the chat. I will do my best. The Spire has finished up for Namshur. He's got 15 Mutas on the way. Now, that's a really interesting choice. I think most players, once they see a lot of Battlecruisers, would probably go for Corruptors, my suspicion is. Namshur thinks, oh, I've killed three of his Battlecruisers. Surely, he's going to go off Battlecruisers. And that's why he's building um, Mutalisks instead of Corruptors. Little does he know that Massa is a madman and is staying on this Battlecruiser build. Scouting Barracks going to get spotted here by these Mutas. And the Battlecruisers pushing their way across the map. The Mutalisks should go to meet them in battle suit. Interesting. Uh, Massa has seen these Battlecruisers and is sticking on his Mutalisk play. Mutas have been seen. Missile turrets trying to go down, but they're not going to finish in time. This Mutalisk flock entering from the north is going to do massive damage. The bunker barely getting repaired, but should go down soon. This Mutalisk flock simply too great to be ignored it's gonna get chased away but this is this is bad news bears here for massa that's a really good defense from massa though getting a couple cyclones in place but it's only two cyclones and the mutilist number from namshire is simply too high cyclone one goes down cyclone two goes down this draws the battle cruisers all the way back across the field and gives namshire time to gt heck out of there uh, and he's adding on even more six he's going mass muta you guys unbelievable Namshire, go and mass Muta again for the second time in this best of nine series. He knows that his opponent can't keep up with mass Muta. You got what? A couple battle cruisers here and there. Battle cruisers are slow. One Yamato not going to do anything. I'm going to get on top of these missile turrets. I'm going to clean out your mineral lines. I'm going to run by into your third because I know there's nothing here. The battle cruisers getting pulled to and fro, but Massa getting the kills that he needs, jumping on top of the Battlecruiser in the main. The Battlecruiser are going to try and teleport away. It will make it out, but the third base has been cleaned out, and the Mutalisk is free to run rampant in the main here. Massa just getting torn to shreds by this unexpected mass Mutalisk transition from Namshar. Corruptors, who needs them? I got Mutas. I got 23 Mutas on Michael Jordan's worth of Mutas here. Battlecruiser 1, going to fall. Battlecruiser 2, Never mind. He's going to magic box the Thor. The Thor going to fall. Now, Battlecruiser number two. Cyclone's going down. These Mutalisks are insatiable. I, this is terrifying. Oh, man. He's trying to get another Thor out, but the Battlecruiser's going down like flies. The Zerglings running into the third. The fourth base under assault cancels one of his uh, command centers. And Masa, I think, just kind of waiting as the noose gets drawn tighter and tighter around his neck. 54 SCVs have gone down, and that number continues to climb. The Thor and Cyclone distracted in the main base by the small pack of mutas, as the large pack of mutas again gets on top of the Thor, kicks it down, GG is called, and Namshire wins game number five, going up to a 4-1 lead. Wow. Wow. What a game. Uh, showing a very strong game in game number five. 
Let's see what we got for map six. It's either going to be purity and it is in here to game number six, which could be the finals for fat. They are a line of low carb, high fat foods uh, on a waiting screen, but I do need to be right back. Uh, I do need to take about 30 seconds after which I will be right back. So guys, I'm going to put two minutes on the... Hi, everyone. Welcome back. Thank that timer a little bit early. We are all done with that. And we are moving straight in. Uh, before we end up uh, S159 uh, and contribute to our Macharino, that code gives us free money. Free money. Uh, use the code. It's 50 cents. So please do hop into the, click on that link, uh, go to the Macharino page, enter the code APS159, and that will add 50 cents to our Macharino page. Any support you guys can give uh, would be very, very useful. All right, let's get in here. All right. On the far right-hand side of the map, in the blue, it's our Terran player from Alpha X, currently on the ropes, down. Four games to one. It's Massa. And as we zoom all the way out and follow the golden wall across this map, on the far side, in the red, it's our Zerg player, hailing from Sweden, and Infinity Gaming, it's Namshire. A lot of big talk about Golden Wall these days. A lot of pros unhappy with it. I think those pros can shove it. This map is fascinating. Of course, if you're unfamiliar with Golden Wall, the entire south half of the map is inaccessible to players until they mine out the minerals either here in the back corner of their base, on either side of the gold mineral patches here that you can see the Overlord going by, or there are a large number of minerals in the middle here that are five mineral patches each. Easy to mine through, but difficult to get to. It is in, in a ZVT, it is imperative for Zerg players to mine out the back minerals of their base very, very quickly. I have seen too many Zerg players fall down to early game tank pressure behind their base right here. Tanks from down here can fire up into the main with almost no problem. You can elevator your marines and marauders into the main base and if the zerg players have not chipped out some of these minerals somewhere on the map it is impossible for your zerglings to surround or get on top of any of those units very important overlord from namshire uh, did get driven away by this by the uh the marine in the base of Massa. Didn't see too much, just the factory on the build. And will not see that starport quite yet. Interesting starport placement there from Massa. Indicates the, the uh, barracks going to have to land to the side of the starport. But we do see the factory swap over happening. Hellion's going to be popping out for Massa quite soon. As a, ooh, a rather early lair tech here out for Namshire. Now he's only on, what, one gas? Grabbing his second gas now. third base here at the uh the nine nine o'clock ish position 9 30 position for namshire namshire not following my advice not mining out down to the bottom here so if massa chooses to mine out some of those minerals he could be in very very good shape with a tank push on the south side but right now both players keeping it above board staying north of the golden wall Lairtech has gone unscouted so far. Uh, Namshire about to finish that lair. What is he saving up his gas for? He's taking gases three and four at the natural as well. Viking now out for, uh, for Massa. Gonna pop out and attack this overlord. Driving it away. And that should be Massa's cue 
to start building something else. He, oh, he drops that factory in view of the Overlords. The Overlord actually sees that second factory going down. And we're going to see again Massa going for a massive mech play this game, but the Spire already down for Mancher. Mancher. Namshire. Gas is 3 and 4 taken. Bailing Nest up front. I wonder if that's just a juke. He may cancel that. Or he may keep it. Either way, it would be fine, honestly. Sometimes you need those bailings on the ground to defend. But honestly, every ounce of gas that Namshire harvests between now and the finishing of this spire should go straight to Mutalisks. His Mutalisk flock last game is so frightening. And again, going mech for Massa means that Mutalisk could be very deadly if Massa fails to get more Cyclones out this game than he did last game. He does have double tech lab going down on these factories, so I like the thought that he's probably going to get extra Cyclones out rather than just tanks. But if Massa went double tank here, that would be that would be very surprising for starters. But also, um, okay, double Cyclone. That's a good play from Massa. That's going to negate some of the damage of these Mutas as soon as they pop out. We'll see Namshire saved up about 600 gas, so we should have about 700, uh, 7, um, should have about 7 Mutas on the way very soon. Devin using those codes. Thanks so much, Devin. I appreciate it, man. Uh, Hellion run by into the third. Nothing here to defend. And Namshire a little bit slow, actually, to pull these drones away. He's not pulling the drones at all. Three drones going down immediately. But the real damage is going to happen there. Six drones total. Good surround. Uh, that will get cleaned up by Namshire. But six drones going down. That's a nice pick. The Mutas are out, though. Coming across the map. Cyclones are here for Massa. Shouldn't be too hard for those Cyclones to rotate down. Where are the Mutas going, though? There's only six of them. There are only six of them. Oh, they're going to go right on top of these Cyclones. Uh, now, they could Magic Box those Cyclones out. Already Thor's coming out from Massa, though. Massa going straight to Thor tech. Really interesting choices here. The Mutas, again, trying to get these Cyclones. Mass Repair going down, but oh, the Cyclone trying to sneak out. And all these SCVs now under duress. Gotta hope that these Thors pop out soon, because there ain't nothing that shoots up for Massa. Namshire is going to have his... Yeah, a playground to, to play on here. Not a Marine in sight. Where is the one Marine for Massa? Oh, these Thors. Going to be his saving grace, but 17, 18, 19. Oh, lordy, lordy. 23 SCVs going down. 24, 26. Oh, ho, ho. oh Massa, not like this. Not like this. Pulls from the third because he knows that they're just going to rotate around. Uh, now, seven drones have gone down behind this on the other side. But unfortunately, if you look at those two numbers and compare which one is larger, it's pretty easy to tell. But Massa is in a really rough spot now. He's trying to go for Thor. like, or He's trying to keep the Thors alive with Thor drops, I guess. Trying to zone these... Uh, Mutalisks out. And we'll try and pick him off with the Thors. But he's got to be very cautious there. That Medivac can go down very quickly. Oh, eating a couple more shots here, and wow, Nam get the, the balls on this player. Namshire has seen the Thors come out, and he's like, you know what? Mutas. That's what's good against Thors, right? Nailed it. He's getting plus one missile attacks and plus one melee attacks on the way. Uh, Namshire, it just has, I mean, 78 drones. Massa trying to get back in the income game, but that's a considerable spike. So many SCVs going down. Going to be very difficult for Massa. He, it may, he may look fine for a while here, but, like, you know, three, five, seven minutes from now, uh, that's when things are really going to snowball. Devin, thanks. This is the Game Heart overlay. I really like it as well. It's compact. It's easy to read. It's no nonsense. I really like it. All right, Thors are here. And again, we're going to see these mutas try and magic box these Thors. Nice micro here from Massa, actually saving one of the Thors. And that's going to drive the mutas back. That Thor actually being saved. Nice defense from Massa, honestly. Very well done. He needs about 17 more defenses like that, except without losing five SCVs at the same time. And not getting a run by here at the third. There's a Thor here as well. Wow, Mass Thor already coming out from Massa. Man, I don't know. Mute is in the natural now, trying to get on top of these missile turrets. Namshire actually eating a lot of damage there. He's lost six Mutas now from his flock for the cost of eight SCVs. Not really a fair trade. But the SCV count's still dangerously anemic for Massa. And look at this creep spread. Massa has not gone more than out of his base th this entire game. I don't think he's scouted anything. He's okay. He's seen some of these bases, but gee, even in Christmas. 
Uh, meanwhile, behind this massive beginning creeps right on the south side of the map as well. Double Hydralisk Den coming down for Massa, cause, or for Namshire, because sometimes you need two Hydra Dens. You can make two Hydras at the same time with two Hydra Dens, guys. <laughs> Namshire. Namshire's just flexing now. Uh, a thousand minerals immediately dumped into so many Hydralisks. Uh, Hydra's an interesting choice against Thors. I guess the range gives him a bit of, uh, a bit of play. Massa trying to take this gold base. He needs something to come back in this game. And the gold base might just be the, the golden ticket that he needs to come into the Wonka factory of not losing this game. Scan to pick off some of the creep, but Massa should know the creep this far is really, really bad news bears for him. Muta's rotating down south. Thor kind of halfway between the gold base and the, uh, and the third base. Oh, man, but again, these mutas just able to slip in and find a nice position. Five more SCVs going down. As we see base number 14,000 for Namshire here at the 11 o'clock. Oof. Oof. Ouch. Owie. My bases. Income. Over 1,000 in favor of, of Namshire for the last five minutes here. He is just going to be able to roll over his opponent. Uh, with Hydralisk, Roach, Ravager. Got some Vipers for those Abducts. That's exactly what he needs now that he's got Hive Tech done. A couple Vipers to abduct the Thors into the Hydralisk, and he's going to be in good shape. Hellion run by going up into the main. Actually, this might be able to do a bit of damage. There's nothing here for Namshire. All his army out of the map right now. That's going to draw most of his army back into the main. Oh, dear. Some spores go, or some spines go down to try and save this. Six drones going to get roasted. The queen should go down as well. But the Hydra's able to respond quite quickly, and that's going to be good news. As this is cleaned up, Buying Massa a little bit of time, but the Mutas have arrived again, picking down the one missile turret in the natural, going for the armory, but should be going just for SCVs again. Uh, this is really where Mutas shine. Seven drones for the cost of what's going to certainly be at least seven SCVs. Thor's again getting medevac dropped into the main. Look at that, exactly. Oh, nine SCVs. Getting a couple more, you cheeky, ba you cheeky bear. Uh, but, man, I, th I think Namshire can just about A move at this point. The Viper's not even part of this fight. The Hellion's trying to come through here for... For Massa on the south side, but the massive army of Namshire now going into the main base should be able to tear everything apart. We're going to see, well, gosh, almost a bit of a base trade here between these players. Blue Flame Hellbats in the main, but those will get cleaned up. There's some Queens and Spine Crawlers here. Meanwhile, the massive army at the gold, the repair going down, but the Planetary Fortress is going to fall, and the Hydralisks doing so much damage. The Thors trying to slow walk some bad pathing from Massa. He's going to lose 21 of those SCVs, but the Abducts going down on the, th the Thors pulling them right into range of these. Oh, beautifully done, the Thors. The uh, Namshire using these line of sight blockers beautifully in that fight, pulling the Thors just over the line of sight blockers so his Hydras can eat them for lunch. Now, the blue flame attack still going down. The Hive under duress, but the uh, I think the Hive's going to make it. There's just not enough uh, blue flame hellbats here. And there is still a Mutalisk fighting one Thor in this natural. This game looking so, so good for Namshire now. 71 workers to 50, 111 army supply. To 46. Uh, again, looks like good use of the line of sight blockers here. The uh, bulk of the army for Namshire hiding behind some of those weeds and the last, I mean, the last Thor for Massa. Well, he's got three Thors, but one of the last Thors gonna go down for Massa. And and again, what what can you do in the face of this much Hydralisk? These are two one Hydralisks. Massa's gonna see the ball. He GG's out. And Namshire, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be our champion today with a 5 over alpha. Congratulations to Namshar. Uh, condolence up in the top of the chat. It, it just takes a few seconds to go contribute to the page. That helps pay our players a little bit. And uh, helps remind our players that these are great show matches. And that they should continue to do the Alpha Pro series. Thank you all for stopping by. And that's going to be the end of our stream today. I hope you all enjoyed the games. I know I did. And thank you for sharing your time with me crew. We'll see you later.